What's up guys, Demonator 1, 2, and 2, and it's review day. Ah yes, review day. Today's the day we look at one of my favorite shows from when I was a little kid, Zaboomafu. In my new series debuting today, Zaboomafu Review. Review. I figured after my nice hiatus, I would get back into making some YouTube content, but I would get back into doing some things that I am really passionate about. Zaboomafu. And we're a better place to start than the first episode, The Nose Nose. The Nose Nose. Zabumafu aired in 1999 on PBS Kids, starring the Krat brothers, Chris and Martin, as well as the titular Zabumafu, this uncanny lemur puppet. All well, they putz around Animal Junction, talking about uh, whatever thing they could loan from the zoo that day. But that theme song, though. Anyways, episode one starts with the Krat Brothers crawling out of a cave and exclaiming that they smell like shit. Do we smell like Bacuano? <laughs> nice PBS, starting them early. Starting an educational show on a poop joke. That's pretty, that's pretty ballsy, actually. <laughs> but look who it is, it's Sabumafu! Oh, that's not Zabumafu, that's a real lemur! Apparently they gotta feed the damn thing so it turns into the puppet. Zabumafu makes some remark that they smell like f crap. You smell. And then remarks that along the way home he saw a really strange animal. Leading us to our first segment of Who Could It Be? Who could it be? It's clearly just an elephant. It's a tapir? It could be a tapir, I guess. <laughs> oh, what do you know? It's a baby elephant. <laughs> like, that's a, a thing that just happens. Credit where credit's due, that's an actual elephant in the room with them. Not only that, it's clearly seen some things. It's one of P.T. Barnum's. <laughs> they, they, they decide to name the damn thing Toothbrush because they go through this goofy segment of brushing it with a novelty-sized toothbrush. That was their reasoning. The elephant does, however, seem to really like the scratching, but not as much as the Boomafoo likes it. Oh, lower down my back. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. But this elephant is multi-talented. Gotta really make sure those kids understand just how prehensile their nose is. So much so this elephant can play the harmonica. Wait, wait, is that Billy Joel? And then we have this goofy segment of them kicking a soccer ball around with it. It seems to be having a good time though. It did try to eat it at one point. I wonder who taught him to play soccer? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> And all of this farting around with an elephant reminds Zabu of a time in Zabuland, and we're treated with our first Zabulang segment. It's a weird claymation fever dream that reminds me of that Mark Twain movie. What's your name? Satan. Uh oh. <laughs> but instead of the devil, it's just uh, Snuffleupagus and Purple Gumby here playing uh, double dutch with, with Zabu. But after that scarring segment, it's time to feed Toothbrush. But oh no, the machine's broken. The clearly wood thing that someone's just standing behind is busted. Oh, shoot. But Toothbrush don't care, he just gooses that thing. Putting his, you know, putting his, his nose to good use. That's, that's, it's educational, kids. But the Krat Brothers do need to fix the machine, so we cut to some B-roll of an elephant pushing a tree down, and then Zabu sings this absolute bop. I'm feeling kind of elephantish. I feel different, not the same. This kind of feeling I can't explain. And then halfway through the episode, we are finally introduced to the actual conflict here, because the Super Krat Brothers decide that the elephant must have followed them back to Animal Junction because they smell like bad shit. You know what attracts elephants? Bat poop. But instead of getting this large wild animal back to its herd out in the wilderness, we are instead subjected to this segment about this girl named Jackie chasing snakes around in her garden with a push mower. Gotta get them 22 minutes, boys. In what I assume is this show's version of the Sailor Moon transformation sequence that pads the episode. But while they were doing all that garbage, the damn thing walked away. The elephant must have got bored as shit and just decided to leave. So, your pet elephant has decided to just get up and walk away. What's the best way that you can think of to track it down? Follow the screams of everyone in your neighborhood that sound like, ah, an elephant, what? No, get a bloodhound. Chris, Martin, it's a damn elephant, not a body out in the woods. Anyway, they get the bloodhound to sniff the harmonica and a kooky searching the woods montage ensues. And like, why are they wet all of a sudden? <laughs> Did it like rain while they were shooting? <laughs> and then surprisingly, they actually find the elephant. And it's with like other elephants just like out in the woods. 
and they're really there. It's not it's not B-roll or anything. They're really in the shot with them. They're standing way far back because they're elephants and presumably uh, partially dangerous. That's actually pretty impressive. What'd they do, B break into a zoo? <laughs> but enough of that nonsense. We gotta get back to Animal Junction. And what do you know? Something's afoot. Oh, well, I, I was gonna say bush babies, but coatis, sure. Uh, coatis, I guess they have a good nose, but you know what else has a good nose? Everything but humans, basically. They, they fart around the coatis for a while. One finds an egg, that's, that's fun. You put that there, Chris, don't even start. But all this farting around with the coatis has the boo subject us to another one of these crazy, weird, not flip-flap synced claymation things, stop it. In this one, the Snuffleupagus, who I didn't pay attention enough to remember its name, is trying to push a zoot fruit up a hill, but it keeps falling back down when he sneezes. A la Sisyphus, I guess. So Zabu gets the great idea to just spin him around him, sneeze the zoot fruit up to the top of the hill. And you know what? It works. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the lesson here is. Um, maybe perhaps Sisyphus could have gotten that boulder up the hill, uh, if he just sneezed. But it was all worth it because we're treated to this line here. So me and Narchi sat on top of the hill and nibbled on his zoot fruit all day. And that's practically it. After we get back to the real world, there's a little bit of song about all animals are animals, and, uh, they play with a, a baby pug for a while. It's pretty cute, I guess. I don't know. I had to get to 22 minutes. And that is the first episode of Zaboomafu. I actually remembered this one. <laughs> Skimming the episode to make the script, I was like, holy crap, I remember the big toothbrush and the fact that the elephant's name was Toothbrush. When did I watch this, like 20 years ago? <laughs> Jeez. Ah! Just like the Kratz Brothers' other show, they did have a lot of B-roll in them, which makes me feel like, you know, they might not know what they're talking about, or they know exactly what they're talking about, and they don't, they're don't they not like Steve Irwinning it up and, and going and hanging out with lions and getting mauled. So, I don't know, take that one as you will. And Zabubafu himself, he's, um, a bit annoying. And for some odd reason, this scene in the intro when he, like, comes up out of the water with the fin on his head, it really bothers me. I, I don't know why. But overall, I would give this episode two broken, clearly fake food machines out of five. So hope you join us next time for episode two of Zaboomafu Review. It's totally not a fake thing I put Ryan up to to edit for April Fools. <laughs> oh, it's totally legit. Totally legit. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. I feel like I'm gonna introduce the iPhone. <laughs> it's me and you and Sabuma Foo. Come along and see what's new. This song's gonna be stuck in my head for a week.